Hi, Matt Allington here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine multiple sheets from a single workbook into Power BI Desktop. Of course, the approach also works for Power Pivot for Excel and um, other Power Query products. So let me show you my workbook. So I have multiple sheets. Each sheet is in the same format, one for each month. I've got some sheets here that I don't want to import and at some point in time in the future this same workbook is going to be updated to have additional sheets added to it. Okay, so let me close that down and go into Power BI Desktop. I do like to copy the address from here and I'll say get data from Excel put in the path, there's my sheet. I'm going to directly point to this workbook in this case, but uh, you could combine this technique with some of the other techniques I've shared on my YouTube channel. Okay, now here are the sheets that are currently available, and there's no option here to select all. Um, and so the trick here is to come up to this folder and right click and select edit because what we don't want to do is load the individual sheets so we're going to right click and click edit okay so now we see all of the sheets visible in this list here so we need to do a couple of things first of all I'm going to filter out these additional sheets now I don't want to hard code these and say just remove these two sheets instead I'm going to use a text filter and say does not I should have said does not begin with sheet and so as you can imagine that makes it a little bit future proof in case additional sheets get added um, it's not going to solve every problem it's just a better approach okay so now I do want the rest of these sheets now before I do this I'm going to get rid of some of these columns because I need to keep the name of the sheet because that tells me the month and also I need to keep the data. So now I can expand this and bring in the data and I now need to use the first row as headers. So that's promoted the first row. Notice when I did that actually two steps were created, the promote header step and the change type step. Now this is actually going to be an issue because notice how this sales territory key column has been typed as being um, an integer. Every single sheet has got a header row and if I now try to click here load more it's going to throw an error. The reason it throws an error is that at some point when we get to the February sheet there is another header row and we need to remove that header row uh, in fact, we need to remove all subsequent header rows. Um, the easiest way to do this is just to delete this step and then load more. There's the header row. I can deselect that. That will deselect every additional header row. After that's been deselected, I can multi select Control A, transform, and reapply the detect data type. Okay, now there's another problem here, and that is that the first column is called January because that's the name of the first sheet. So really we want this to be month. But if I make this change, I've actually hard coded inside Power Query saying find the column called January and rename it as month. This is a potential um, point of failure in the future. Let me show you. So I'll go file close and apply. I'll then create a simple table visual so we can see the data. Let me bring the month and I'll just bring in the sales amount. And as always, I'll just switch the theme. Okay, so there's the data so far. So now let me simulate um, the fact that some more data is created. So, and I'm also going to trigger this problem. So I'm going to open it. This is not a real scenario, of course. I'm just simulating this, but at some point in time, a new file will come along. And so I'm going to duplicate this sheet. And I'm going to create 
a June sheet and I'm deliberately going to put it as the first sheet because that will simulate this error. Okay, so now when I come here and I hit refresh, it's going to throw an error because at some stage in my query, I said find the column name January and rename it to month, but there now is no column called January. The first column is called June. So what we need to do is we need to edit this query so that it uses the relative reference of the first column and not the absolute reference. Okay, so I'm sure there's a few ways of solving this and I'm going to show you the way I like to solve the problem. I'm just going to click refresh preview here because this will trigger the error. Uh, this preview is always cached. And so now this even this change type step is throwing an error because it's trying to change the type of a column called January, but there is no column called January anymore. If I delete that step, you'll see that the column is now called June. So the way I solve this problem is there, there is a um, custom function. So I'm, um, I'm basically going to write some M code here, and it's called table.columnNames. And what this function does, as it suggests, is it returns the names of the columns. And so here are the names of all the columns in my table. And so I want this one here. And so this is the first one. I can right click and drill down. So notice how this curly bracket zero comes after the step custom one. So this basically says, give me the first row in the previous list. So if I come here, I could actually just hard code that like this. And that's it, that's the name of the first column. So I'm going to copy this code, control C, and I'm just going to delete these two steps. And so now I'm going to rename the column month. You can see here it's been hard coded. It says find the column called June and rename it month. But I'm going to paste my code, which gives me the relative name of that first column. So even if the name of the first column changes, it's still going to work. So now I'm going to control A, transform, detect data type, file, close and apply. That should now load the data for June. And once again, simulating what happens when we get a new month's worth of sales. I'm going to duplicate this sheet and call it July. It's the first sheet and this should now work. And you can see that it's correctly renamed that column. If you liked this video and want to learn more about Power Query, I have a comprehensive online training course that you can find at my website under Learn Power Query Online.